Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. In today's video I will be talking about the WizMaker L1. This is a 36 watt absolute beast of a laser engraver. I'll be going over its assembly, some of its features, and then doing a few test cuts so we can get an idea of its power. As I said in the beginning of this video, this is a WizMaker L1 36 watt laser engraver. There are also a 12 watt, a 20 watt, and a 24 watt version available. The 36 watt will be available mid-June. Here are the specs and features of the L1. The laser power is stated to be 36 watts, and I believe that they achieved that 36 watts by stacking six 6 watt laser diodes. The total power draw is 144 watts. It has an engraving area of 400 millimeters by 400 millimeters on the X and Y axis. With the laser module at its maximum height, the clearance on the Z axis is approximately 41 millimeters. It uses a 32-bit controller to achieve a max speed of 24,000 millimeters a minute. However, mine was shipped capped at 6,000 millimeters a minute, but you can change the setting using the castle and light burn. The L1 also comes equipped with an emergency stop button. The machine is very well built. It's very rigid and constructed from all metal. The only plastic I found on the machine were the feet. So this machine should be able to handle the high speeds it's capable of. According to WizMaker, they offer 24-7 after-sale support, 12 months of VIP support, and lifetime technical support. Now the machine that gets released in mid-June may be slightly different than this machine because this is a pre-release version. Alright, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into the assembly. Step 1, we'll put together the rails. This is what the side rails look like. The left side rail will be the one that has the stepper motor on it. Each corner is going to require four 10 millimeter M5 screws. I just wanted to mention real quick on this back rail that you want to make sure the side that has the hole in it here, like I'm showing you, is facing down when you assemble these rails. These corners will just slide together. They go together fairly easy, probably a lot easier for you since you won't be reaching around a camera and a tripod while you're doing it. Then using the M5 screws, we'll secure the corners together. Here's the machine with the four rails all screwed together. Now on to step two. I want to make a note here. On the side rails, you want to make sure that the sliders are pushed all the way back against the back rail before you attach the x-axis. Here's what the x-axis looks like from the top and you're going to be putting two 60 millimeter screws into those holes. You're going to want to do that on both sides. In the next step, we're going to install the shaft. On the front right side of the machine, there's a hole that you can slide the shaft in through. You're going to want to slide it all the way through until it inserts into this linkage and then you're going to want to tighten these screws down really, really good. Now 
And in the next step, we're going to add these feet. It's really easy to do. Just screws into this one single hole on the bottom. In the next step, we're going to attach the module. The module attaches to a rail on the x-axis and then is tightened with this knob on the back. And this is how you will raise and lower your module. The final assembly step is to connect all of our wiring and to organize it. The machine comes with a pack of these clips and this is what you use to organize your wiring. Once you have your wire management laid out, then you're just going to want to go around and plug in all the wires. And that's it for the assembly. It really doesn't take very long. Four screws for each corner, two screws on the x-axis, and then plugging in your wiring. If you find that your machine's movement is too tight or too loose, Here's how you can use the included 10 millimeter wrench to adjust the concentric nuts. On the top of the x-axis is an opening to make adjustments. And you can get to the concentric nuts on the side rails by flipping the machine over and there's an opening underneath that you can fit the wrench into. Now if you find that your belts are too loose or too tight, here's how you can make adjustments to those. You just loosen this side screw and then you're able to turn this screw here either counterclockwise to loosen or clockwise to tighten the belt. Once you've made your adjustments, then you're going to want to go back and tighten the lock screw down. And now, with all of our assembly done and our adjustments done, we can finally do some testing on this machine.
as you can see the machine was able to cut through right through every single thing that I tried ranging from 8 millimeter thick wood to 20 millimeter thick and then also 6 millimeter black acrylic um, some of it is a little charred but you know that's just because you're doing it in one pass so it's that's what's going to happen if you were doing this for a project you'd probably want to use less power and more passes and you could reduce that charring by quite a significant amount on this one right here you can see that this thing actually caught on fire and I'll show you the video clip of that here at the end but it, it was a little scary and it, uh, it kind of wakes you up to the safety factor of uh, running these machines don't ever walk away thinking it's okay to just go do something while the machines running because you just might come back to a real serious problem And here's the clip of the fire I was talking about. I think it happens right about here. There it is. And I was actually looking away doing something on the computer and I looked back and saw this. Luckily I was able to open the door and blow on it real hard and it actually went out. But it's a lesson in safety. And there you have the WizMaker L136 watt laser engraver. Um, you know, from the extent that I have tested it, I haven't found any problems with the machine. I think it's well built. Um, it's obviously extremely powerful. Um, this isn't really a review because I don't feel like you can do truly do a review of a machine after you've only used it for a day or two. So I will be coming back after I've had some time with the machine and I will do an actual real review, you know, because that's when problems are going to pop up is down the road, not the first day. So overall, I would say it, as it is at this point, uh, a really great machine, very easy to put together. As you saw, four, four screws on each corner, two screws on each end of the X axis and a few plugs to plug in. And that's it very simple 20 minutes and that was including filming the whole process and everything having to set up the camera move lighting all of that and uh, I, I there's nothing that I could find to complain about um, but as I said I'll come back to it and give a more in-depth review of how it's held up and um, also I'll probably do a video on uh, some sort of project or something that I'll do with the machine so we can see it in action so that brings me to the end of the video and you know as always I just want to say to everybody thanks for watching thanks for subscribing and until next time take care